Chemistry is all about compounds, interaction and change. Follow us back in time to see how it all began for what today is called Science of Synthesis, the world's largest collection of tried and tested synthetic methods in organic chemistry. In 1909, Leo Bacalant had a patent issued for the first mass-produced synthetic material, Bacalant. Fritz Hoffmann developed the first synthetic rubber, the so-called Bono rubber, and General Electric introduced the electric toaster. Also in 1909 in Berlin, chemist Theodor Weil published a book called Methoden der Organischen Chemie, a book that would lay the foundation of a hundred-year-long endeavor of countless organic chemists around the world, and which would make his name famous. Inherent in Weil's philosophy was the comprehensive description of preparative methods in a consistent style and their critical evaluation by leading experts. While World War I turned the world into a battlefield and a decade later Black Friday destroyed all hope for an economic revival, chemistry changed the world in its own way. In 1928, Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin. In 1935, Wallace Carothers first produced nylon, and the Biostoff company invented a transparent PSA tape, since known as TISA. Already 1913, Heinrich Huben, then chemist in Emil Fischer's lab in Berlin, directed his attention toward the work of Weil. Huben started to work on Weil's Methoden der Organischen Chemie and further developed it with amendments and additions. World War I interrupted Huben's work on Weil's book and only in 1923 he was able to finally publish the second edition of Methoden der Organischen Chemie and in doing so further contributed to the good reputation of German chemistry. Already in 1925 the third edition was published. After World War II, much of the world was busy with rebuilding. And again, chemistry should contribute its share. Otto Bayer, who in 1937 discovered the first polyurethane synthesis, managed to synthesize acrylonitrile for fiber production. Hans Meerwein discovered carbocations, which was groundbreaking for the understanding especially of polymerization reactions. In 1963, Carl Siegler was awarded the Nobel Prize, together with Giulio Natta, for his discoveries in the field of polymers. These scientists, together with Eugene Müller, founded the fourth edition of Huben Weil, which began in 1952 and was continued from 1975 by Heinz Kropf and Hansgerd Patekin. The fourth edition was completed in 1986 with a total of 70 volumes. The entire fourth edition was published in German, but was nevertheless well known all over the world. Since my youth, I've been guided by many towering German chemists, particularly in the area of catalysis. I have long respected the glorious tradition of German chemistry that is char characterized by the scientific originality, steadiness, and practicality resulting in enormous technological and economical impact. Thus, I do appreciate the Theme Publishing House for the unfailing effort in this respect. One of the best ways to track chemistry was to use this wonderful series, Huben Weil. Uh, it's, uh, it's its 100th birthday this year, and I find that the recipes in it from my during my uh, lifetime have always been excellent and I was lucky to take in high school I took German and uh, learned to read it well and even speak it and that was the only foreign language I have but it really led me into this wonderful world of things that work. The 80s saw the fall of the Berlin Wall. On the chemistry front acid dothamidine was the first drug to be authorized for the treatment of AIDS and the total synthesis of Taxol marked an important step in the fight against cancer in the 1990s. During this era, the Hubenweil series was updated with 90 additional and supplementary volumes. 
After 1990, Hubenweil was published in English, thus making it more accessible to chemists worldwide. Hubenweil seemed like a never-ending story of more and more volumes. I think this was a reflection of how chemistry was done in Germany in the 50s, 60s and maybe even in the 70s of the past century. Professors had not chased up money all the time from funding agencies, but they could really focus on a topic and produce useful chemistry and more and more of it. So there's also a lot of chemistry in Hubenweil and lots and lots of useful information. However, sometimes it's hard to locate and of course it's in German. I'm afraid in the editorial office in Stuttgart at Thieme, the change to English was seen as a sort of earthquake. New language, new rules, new communication pathways, but it had to happen. A new chemistry reference work, Science of Synthesis, was then launched, based on the same tradition as Huben Weil. An international editorial board was appointed and 48 volumes planned. The best authors worldwide were selected to contribute to the series. We live in the age of globalization and Humweil had to find an answer to that. And this answer is science of synthesis. The result is a premium product on all aspects of organic synthesis, a compendium of checked and balanced information. This becomes more and more important in a world which is in the danger of being drowned in an ocean of data, also in chemistry. Here, science of synthesis is the help. Science of synthesis, namely the latest edition of Hubenweil, is a milestone work for the community of synthetic organic chemistry. It will be the most widely used resources in organic synthesis in both academia and industry. It was completed after 15 year international collaboration in which chemists of more than 10 countries in Europe, America and Asia were involved. I do appreciate our colleagues worldwide who participated willingly in this very long term endeavor. We noted that the 48 volume products were published in English, not German, used in the earlier editions. This is very beneficial for students and researchers in non-European non countries, particularly in Japan. And today, this, this continues as Hubenweil and the science of synthesis, which is uh, the current uh, uh, continuation, and it's just the same as the old. It has all the great choices, the recipes. It's, the people who select what goes in here are working chemists, and they understand what, what's most useful. Um, that, that to me is, uh, is, you can look at the internet all you, all you want, but this book, if you read it uh, cover to cover, I've read virtually everything behind me here, and it's made a difference to my way of doing chemistry. I, I, uh, it's, uh, it's been a hundred years, and I'm, I'm wishing them another hundred years, and maybe some of your grandchildren will be diving into this book still then. In 2002, Science of Synthesis moved to the web, bringing with it all content from all Hubenweil volumes ever published as a digital archive. This gave researchers efficient access to 100 years of synthetic organic chemistry, with more than 150,000 product-specific experimental procedures. The internet has been the most exciting technological development this century so far. Chemists were among the first to realize its potential and use this to their advantage. To realize the transition from print Hubenweil to electronic format science of synthesis was um, in that respect probably the, the most challenging uh, project uh, we, we ever had and of course we, we did learn an awful lot of things and, and we made a lot of mistakes then had to do things again and so on and many of the things we learned in the Hubenweil Science of Synthesis uh, project we uh, later and today could very well use in all other fields that we are publishing in. So we say happy birthday Hubenweil and Science of Synthesis and here's to the next hundred years. Yeah.